that while the illness itself is an outside issue that needs treatment, our struggles with our mental illnesses and the way they impact our recovery are very much inside issues. We need to make this distinction to ensure that we don't fail to seek additional help either because of stigma in the rooms or confusion about the relationship between mental illness and recovery. having a mental illness. Sometimes what we experience is the consequence of a physical condition. When we're detoxing, for example, things can get pretty intense. Most of us in early recovery find that we lack a volume knob for our emotions. Our moods swing wildly, our lives seem very dramatic, and we can be startlingly impulsive. As long as we are not a danger to ourselves or others, many of us find that we can wait this out, things settle down as we get used to our new lives, and as our bodies get used to being clean. Sometimes we look the same, but we just need more time. Emotional detox can take a lot longer than physical detox, and there are days when it's really hard. The time we sit in meetings may be the only time our rates and thoughts slow down at all. Having people around us who have been through what we are going through and come out the other side is very reassuring. We may not be convinced this will pass, but our sponsor's confidence can give us hope. Other physical changes put us through emotional challenges as well. Some physical illnesses or head injuries have emotional or cognitive components, and those of us who struggle with other physical diseases may find our thinking is sometimes profoundly impacted by them. When we are our loved ones feel a sudden change in our behavior, it is worth considering whether there may be physical forces at work. If there is not always a physical or organic cause behind our disturbance, we go through intense emotional changes in recovery, and they can be frightening. Too often we mistake spiritual crisis for mental illness. Depression, or panic may come over us in a wave. Memories come up from the past and seem to swallow our present, and all of this can be hard. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. Chapter 4 Our Physical Cells. 61. As the process we go through on our way to freedom, what we really want is a cure for our feelings. The pain of spiritual growth can feel like depression. A dark night of the soul can be frightening and lonely. But what is happening on the inside is often the process that will bring us into the light. Sometimes there's just bad weather in our heads and we simply need to wait it out. Hanging on, suiting up, showing up, and sharing openly with our sponsor and other members we trust is sometimes all we can do while it passes. We talk about the process and are told to trust in it, but we don't always know what the process is. We may be very confused by where it seems to be taking us. If we focus on putting our faith into action, we can come through difficulty with new understanding and awareness. This kind of crisis can be frightening in its intensity, and sometimes it seems we can only distinguish it from another kind of struggle in retrospect. Intensive it is, it is temporary, and relieved by breakthrough or by an obstinate willfulness to hang on until the crisis passes. We undergo a vital spiritual experience and are changed, says the basic text. We can be restored to sanity and live happy and productive lives. But it 
may not be safe or sensible to me to find out what kind of crisis we're having before we seek help. We may need new tools to continue to build our house. It doesn't mean we are abandoning the work we have done or betraying our commitment if we sometimes go looking for them elsewhere. Yeah.
preserve our youth as best we can, working hard to dress and care for ourselves so we look and feel younger. Some of us realize that we have planning to do, and take action to ensure the future for ourselves or our children. Finding a balance between vanity and self-respect, between self-loving and self-acceptance, is a struggle for many of us. Surrender, we find that aging too is a journey, and we can actually enjoy the adventure. We are not just growing old, we're growing up. A member shared, there really isn't so much to this aging thing except self-acceptance and what your body does. Like so many things in recovery, it sounds so simple from the other side, but getting there can be a long walk. It might be impossible to separate the changes that come with graceful aging from the changes that come from working steps. Together, though, the combination is remarkable. As time has passed and our fellowship has aged, we have started noticing from a lot of Alzheimer's getting more and more beautiful. There is something about spirituality that radiates through our outer being, a sort of agelessness that appears as elegance and dignity. Although we may fear growing older, many of us find that we can embrace and love what we have become, aches and pains and all. As I have aged and have more trouble getting out of this chair without leaning on the table, said another, I am more secure about who I am. I find myself more attractive than when I was a hot tomato. Death, dying, and living with grief. Addicts die. We talk about it in our literature. We remind ourselves at every meeting that the ends of our disease are jail, institution, and death. But when one of us dies, we generally respond the way anyone else would. With shock, surprise, and anguish. When we lose a member to the disease, we may go back through the same reservations we experienced in early recovery that the program doesn't really work. Many of us experience other reservations at this point as well. The feeling that it doesn't pay to care so much about people, the sense that loving addicts only results in loss and hurt. For some of us, staying in the fellowship after a painful loss can be very difficult. It's not unusual to feel that others are grieving wrong, back, moving clean approval around for decision at WSC 2012. Chapter 4, Our Physical Self. 63. People aren't responding appropriately. When we are hurt and angry, it's easy to lash out, harder to feel compassion and connection. But experience has taught us that these are the things that make it easier to get through difficult times clean, even grief. Losing addicts to the disease of addiction isn't the only way we experience death in recovery. Addicts die clean, too. We lose members of our family. We lose friends. Sometimes it seems like the more connected we are, the more opportunities there are to experience loss. And in a sense, it's true. We love more. We care more. We share more than we ever have, and perhaps
answered question, and in that way it is a gift. Some of us find that a death we experience in recovery triggers feelings left over from earlier losses that we never really had a chance to grieve. We have learned through working the steps that emotions we don't feel in the moment often wait and catch up with us later. The experience of walking through a loss in the present can bring back long forgotten losses from our past. We have been surprised by the force of our emotion at the loss of a friend, or even a pet. We may have thought we could get through the feelings relatively easily and find that we are floored by the experience. Others of us find that there is still some distance between ourselves and the world, or that our reactions are not so immediate. Sometimes our feelings aren't as deep as we think they should be. We think we are supposed to be having a particular experience, and we are feeling something very different. Giving ourselves permission to have our feelings and not judge them is a powerful gift we can give ourselves. Whatever our response, it is ours, and we can own it without allowing it to swallow us or define us. We have the freedom to fully experience a range of emotions, and to know at the same time that our emotions are not the limit of ourselves or of our world. Grief is its own experience. Allows ourselves the time and space to move forward as a commitment to ourselves and to honesty beyond what many of us have experienced before. The feelings move to their own rhythm and on their own time, and it can be very difficult to imagine that we are not doing it wrong when we are surprised by a wave of emotion at an inconvenient moment. As with so much of what we experience, in recovery, there is no one way, and certainly no right way, to go through it. We take comfort in the knowledge that all things must pass, that our feelings will certainly change, and that others around us who have also grieved deeply find a way to survive their emotions, and to thrive once more. We find in recovery that even the worst things we experience can be transformed into a lesson we learn, and then a tool we can use to help others. When we seek conscious contact with a power greater than ourselves, we find ways to be of service. Inside or outside now, being of service helps us find value in our lives when we can't see our value for ourselves. Giving generously of ourselves, especially when we are in pain, is a path through some of our sorrow and confusion. Living clean of ego draft for decision at WSC 2012. 64. We often hear members share that, every day I am in recovery is a bonus, that, I have been given a reprieve. We have a deadly disease and are lucky to be alive, and even luckier to be glad we are alive. Many of us experience in addiction a kind of living death, in which each day was a burden to be survived somehow. Many of us have suicide attempts behind us. Whether or not we actively try to take our own lives, we certainly help them cheat. If you surprise us, then, how shocked we are when we receive bad news from a doctor. Our perfectly human reaction can seem to us like we are ungrateful or unrealistic. Again, giving ourselves permission to feel whatever we feel is as important as it is difficult. Only by admitting our feelings can we begin to deal with them.